Greetings, I am Father Aaron Leach, and today I would like to cover something that tends to be confusing for uh, new students especially, and that is the calculation of planetary hours. Uh, you will find instructions for this in a lot of places uh, online. Um, what we're looking at here is my Codex Septimgenius, which is available on the uh, DocSol's website, and it gives a very brief, uh, brief instruction on how to calculate the hours and it shows uh, which planets are assigned to each hour of every day of the week. Uh, the chart you're looking at here will never change. Um, you'll see that uh, space number one under Sunday here begins with the Sun. Monday will always begin with the Moon, Tuesday with Mars, Wednesday with Mercury, Thursday with Jupiter, Friday with Venus, Saturday with Saturn. The, from the first hour of each day, the planets will follow what's called the Chaldean ordering, which actually begins with Saturn. So let's look at Saturday as an example. Uh, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sol, Venus, Mercury, Luna. This is actually based on the speed of the planets, the slowest planet to the one that is fastest in our sky. This pattern will repeat starting at sunrise all the way down to sunset and just keep right on going through the hours of the night and then they'll pick up on Mon on the next day and continue um, don't be confused if you find charts that try to tell you that the hours uh, the magical hours begin at sunset or that they begin at midnight that is never the case they will always begin at sunrise at least in the solomonic system uh, the other thing you need to be aware of is the day and the night will always be exactly 12 hours long each. That will never change, regardless of what the clock says. So as the days get longer, the daytime magical hour will grow longer and longer. It will grow longer than 60 minutes and upwards towards 70 minutes. And as the nights grow shorter, the nighttime hour will grow shorter, it will get less than 60 minutes. Um, and then of course that switches when you get to the other half of the year. So let's get right into calculating an example. We won't need this. Now I've, I usually scrawl this out in chicken scratch, but I wanted to make this kind of nice for you. But I usually start with a chart something like this. I list my 12 hours. Um, I have a, a column for the day, a column for the night, and then a column for the next day. You'll see why I have that in a moment. Now I've already looked up the sunrise and sunset for my target day. And on the day in question, sunrise will be at 6.52 a.m. And sunset that day comes at 8.18 p.m. Okay. And since we are working on Wednesday, I'm going to mark the first hour as that of Mercury. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fill these in using that Chaldean order I described to you. So Luna, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sol, Venus, Mercury, and Luna. And then it repeats Saturn, Jupiter, Mars. And then it just continues right into the nighttime. So after Mars comes the Sun, Venus, Mercury, Luna. Repeat again. These aren't pretty, I apologize. But they get the idea across. And now, ooh, that's really not pretty. Now here's where you can test whether or not you've gotten these patterns right. And it's real easy to miss a planet or duplicate a planet and, and you get your pattern off. So the planet that will follow uh, Saturn in the pattern is always Jupiter. So the very next day should start with Jupiter. And since this is Wednesday, this is Thursday. So Thursday, hour number one at sunrise, should in fact be assigned to Jupiter. So this tells me that I got my pattern right. 
Okay. Also, for calculating nighttime hours, you're also going to need sunrise the next day. And it just so happens that sunrise is 6.54 a.m. the next day. Okay. <clears throat> With this, you have all the information you need. And the process is not really as complicated as it, as it looks when you're reading it. And that's why I want to show you guys what it actually looks like. So let's just start with the daytime hours, okay? We're going to find out how long a daytime hour is. We know that it starts at 6.52 and it runs until 8.18. All right. So what we need to find out is how many minutes there are from 6.52 to 8.18. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to do here to simplify this. Um, what I like to do is make the day shorter. So if it's 6.52, I'm just going to take 8 minutes off of that and round it up to 7. I'm going to put those 8 minutes off to the side. So 8 minutes from 6.52 to 7. And 8 o'clock at night, I'm going to pull that one back instead of pushing it forward to 8 o'clock. And then I'm just going to take those 18 extra minutes and push them off to the side. Now, it's very simple to find out exactly how many minutes we have because we know from 7 in the morning to 8 at night is 13 hours. Get this, make sure you can see it. Okay, so that's going to be 13 times 60 minutes. And that happens to be 780. Then you also have to have the uh, 18 minutes and the 8 minutes add those back in. So for the entire day, we're going to have 806 minutes. All right. Now, all we have to do is take those 806 minutes and divide them into 12 equal or mostly equal portions. Uh, 12 goes into 806. That's going to be 67. And it's going to leave 0.2. This is the length of the magical hour for the day of Wednesday. 67.2. By the way, 0.2, that's about a fifth of a minute. That's going to be about 12 seconds. Um, as you're making your calculations here, these seconds are not going to really come into play much. Um, sometimes if the remainder is below 0.5, I'll just drop it and not, not pay any attention to it. If it's above 0.5, I'll just round it up to, like, say, 68. Um, the end result at your 12th hour will not be exact, but for practical purposes, it's not going to make a difference. If you do want to be exact, you can take the extra step of adding that in. So, for instance, uh, this 12 seconds, it's going to take five of those to equal an, an entire minute. So, let's say this hour, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to mark number six. And what I'll do is I'll add a minute to the time that we get for number six. And then... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then right here at hour number 11, I'll add another minute. And that should get us exactly to the second. So from here, it's a little tedious, but it's very simple. 67 minutes from 6.52 a.m. Well, 60 minutes later would be 7.52. And if you add s seven minutes to that, you get 7.59. Okay. So 67 minutes after 7.59, well, that would be 8, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that would actually come to 9.06. Uh, an hour later would be 8.59, add another 7 minutes, and you get to 9.06. Um, 57 minutes after that, 10.13. 57 minutes later, 11.20. Uh, then we get to, uh, this would actually be 12.27. You'd add another 7 minutes, but I'm adding a minute to catch up with this extra 12 seconds. So that's going to actually come to 12.28 p.m. Okay. Uh, after 12.28, 57 minutes later, 1.35. Then 2.42. PM, 349, 456, 604, 7, 11. 
Now here's another point where you can check your work. Uh, if hour 12 starts at 7.11, 57 minutes later will be exactly 8.18. And as you see, 8.18 is in fact the first hour of dusk. So now we just need to find out what the nighttime planetary hour length is, because it's going to be different than the day. The day is longer than an hour, so the night is going to be shorter than an hour. Um, now I've done these calculations before, so I'm going to go through this real quick and show you. 818 is dusk, sunset. 654 is, the, is when uh, sunrise for Thursday is. And we can make this 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock and we'll just set those 54 minutes and those 42 minutes aside all right and that will get us actually nine hours so 60 minutes times nine gives you 540 minutes and then we want to add in the 42 and the 54 for a grand total of 636 okay divide that by 12 And you will find 53 minutes exactly with no remainder. And uh, interestingly, the daytime hour was seven minutes longer than an hour. The nighttime hour is seven minutes shorter than an hour. All right. So now let's just go down through here. 50, we're going to add 53 minutes to every, to every time. So 818, 53 minutes later is... 9.11, after that will be 10.04 p.m., 53 minutes after that will be 10.57, then 11.50, 12.43 a.m., 1.36, 2 2.29, 302. Uh, that's AM. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's AM, but I'm going to write that down here. Because uh, that's going to be 415 AM. 508. And 53 minutes later will be 601. All right, now here's our next check. 601 plus exactly 53 minutes gets us to 654, and sure enough, day, uh, sunrise the next day was in fact 654. So we, now we have all of our data correct, and we can go right through here. Let's say, since we're working on the day of Wednesday, we're probably also looking for an hour of Wednesday. 652 AM, seven hours later will be 242 PM. Seven hours after that, you'll be working at 1004 PM. And if you're really dedicated, you can stay up late and work at 4.15 a.m. And that is how you calculate magical hours. Um, there are a lot of apps out there that calculate them. I choose not to use those because I don't trust them. I don't know if they're calculating the uh, minutes right. I don't know if they're accounting for daylight savings time. So if you do use an app, um, or if you're looking for an app, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using one, but at least you can use this to at least test the app out and make sure that uh, it is calculating the hours properly for you. And if you're ever caught without that app, this is the process you'll use to work it out on your own. I hope that helps you out, and we will see you next time. Blessed be.